Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So, the other night we got a ton of patches and updates from Nova himself. He finally hopped off Type Soul so we could do some patches in AL. And the we got these are pretty major ones. It nerfs some of the heavy stuff that allows you to one shot right now. And it kind of buffs some stuff that definitely needed a lot of help, like the best class, Dark Wraith. So I'm going to get into it. I'm going to split up each of the messages and I'm going to go over their importance kind of and why these patch was important. And yeah, if y'all like the video, make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below any game suggestions or questions, or you can join my discord server for questions or help. So let's get right into it. Okay. Immediately our first message, I was in CC chat when he started doing this, right? And I was like, guys, what should I change? And then we were like, change this, 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 this. And he did it. So the first thing he patched immediately was Kansura no longer scales off damage buffs, which made Kansura pretty much have a base, like its base damage is 25. So on top of damage buffs, that's 100 damage, no status effects. And then if you add status effects, that goes up thousands and thousands of damage, which is why it was doing so much. But now, that doesn't scale off damage buffs. That pretty much quartered its total damage now. I, which is, no, it now can, isn't as good as it was before, which isn't that bad because it's still really good. It's just now it can't one shot a buffs that's supposed to take five people to defeat, which is really good for the health of the game because it, it Concero was busted. There's no reason it should have been that good. And the second thing is Fix being able to drink some buff potions outside of combat to stack them when going into combat. So this was um, used if you watch a lot of AL content. You saw a lot of YouTubers doing the one shots on Metrom and without Concero. And the reason they were able to do this was because you could stack and stack and stack and stack invigorating potions which is like, I forgot what its damage buff was, it was like 30% or something. I don't, I'm not quite sure on the potions. All I do know is that you could stack, drink a bunch of them, and you could do Metrom's Vessel in like one fell swoop. And it was just unbelievably busted. So, yeah, this first section is kind of ways Metrom is no longer one shot. So we have Concert no longer one shots. You can't drink stacks of one shot. And the damage and HP region boost from Bloodlust kept out now. I don't know if this is from Berserker or if this is from Impaler. But I'm gonna assume it's from Berserker. And if so, W change. But if it's from Impaler, L change. I don't know. But nerf the energy gain buff on Berserker's Intent Rage Masterclass. Because pretty much... It was really good. You just get the mastery, and then you just have a re you just have an energy regen buff, pretty much get almost guaranteeing two energy per turn, which was kind of wild, which allowed you to stack up four carnage really really fast. So you could just spam max carnages, and it was really busted. And carnage also now is a base cost of two. When or originally its base cost when it get was given energy scaling. It was reduced to one, but now it's a base of two. And Carnage's damage scaling on energy also got reduced because Carnage was insanely overpowered after the buffs. Buffed Impaler's Bloody Berserker passive, it is now 300% at your lowest instead of 220%. So pretty much it's now just m way more damage, almost 1.5 times more damage. It goes down all the way to zero but if you have the mastery it stops at 15 percent of your max health i'm pretty sure then there's also elementalist energy manipulator passive damage buff reduced to 20 percent from 30 percent which definitely balances the passive because elementalist does have a lot of passive damage buffs depending on which mastery you go so the 20 percent energy manipulator buff definitely makes it a little bit more comparable to the rest of the masteries Hexer got a buff, so it's Dark Glare and Abyss Anchor 
take one less energy. This is really good because many people consider Hexer one of the worst classes, if not the worst class in the game. The only reason it is somewhat viable was because of his DOT, and even then, DOT got majorly gutted, so pretty much Hexer couldn't be used at all. But now that it has a couple energy buffs, I should, I do expect seeing some more use out of it. However, it's nothing crazy. It's just an energy buff, but it, Hexer should find more use. Void Bite is now, from the Dark Beast of Dark Wraith, the best class, is now Hex instead of Dark Type. And this is important. Not, It's not really important. It is a W change because it definitely gives more variety to the Dark Wraith kit since it was mostly just dark moves. So now in Thorin, you have another thing in your kit. But you also have another move if there was something that was like maybe weak to Hex. So that's really good. A definitely more variety to the Dark Wraith kit, even if it wasn't a massive change. Dark Smite per hit got a hit increase. So if it got raised by 0.2 and it hits four times, that is a total of one. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to math all that. Never mind. But that, that is a decent damage increase. It should end you up with maybe like 20 more damage in the end, depending on if you're Arc Wraith or Luck Wraith. It's a really good change. Blade Dancer's Unending Flow passive builds up faster and caps out higher, which is really good because in certain cases, you could end up not having a chance to use your move or you couldn't build it up fast enough to reach max. And it would, it would just end up being a whole waste. But now that you can build it up faster and it caps out higher now, that gives you more overall damage and requires you to build up less to get to the prior damage before the current cap. And flowing dance damage per hit was also increased to 1.4 to 1.8. And I'm not... I haven't used a lot of Blade Dancer, but I think it is a multi-hit if you've never used Blade Dancer yourself. It hits a lot of times. I don't remember how many exactly, but I think this is a good change. Blade Dancer got a lot of good buffs. Impaling Strike, I think Lancer, damage increased 12 to 14. And, just like Dark Smite, so I'm going to- it now has a higher chance to crit. So I'm assuming it now has a bonus 25% chance to hit crit. Which would, it does also carry over past 100. So if you already have a 100 chance to crit, it boosts it for a higher chance to double crit. And another important thing, cast Amplify now applies to Ice Element moves, which it didn't before. So if you ever used uh, Corvallis to make an Ice build and you tried to cast Amplify Ice Element moves, it never worked. And I was actually... That was so funny. But, I mean, obviously this is a change that makes sense. It, sh it was supposed to buff ice element moves because it's an element. So, now ice users go crazy, I guess. And applying hex to a target that's immune to hex will now downgrade it to vulnerable. And this is really good because if you had a move that waste uses hex, it was kind of a waste because then you just couldn't give the status effect, but now it's decent that you at least give it vulnerable. That gives things that Dove gives Hex a bit more of a use, like using um, Undulating Hex from Amoris on Thorian, that now make it vulnerable. Bloody Burst damage per shard also increased, Impaler got a buff. Permuth now weighs toward Investor stats, just like Wealth Scramble, so you can double stack Wealth Scramble and Permuth. However, Permuth does not multiply the stats you gained from Wealth Scramble in case you want to try that. But they do stack additively, just not multiplicatively. Enrichment's buffs no longer stack if they're also a ranger. I've never used ranger mutants in my life, and I've never played with a ranger. But this seems like an L for rangers. And another thing, buffed called Dark Beast proficiency. So when I went in, right, I was like, wait, what did he change? But he added two words, it says, also buff and buff damage so now it also buffs dark beast damage which it didn't originally do so now dark beast kind of goes crazy if you have the proficiency added the buff visual whenever you successfully steal buffs from someone with sinister glaze so beforehand with sinister glaze you would steal buffs however you wouldn't visually notice it 
notice it and a lot of people would complain about not getting the buffs when in reality you were it's just that you weren't seeing them but now you can and rending barrage damage per hit increased 2.5 to 3.5 this is really good because i used to consider rending barrage one of the worst moves in the game period it was a multi-hit but it did legitimately no damage but now it finally has a use and it does a little bit more damage which i think will give it way more use than it had beforehand blood eruption is now magic type instead of physical type so if any of y'all impalers got stuck fighting a cursed corpse and almost died there's your magic type move dark blight drain life still healing for summons massively increased 20 percent of damage to 150 percent of damage that is absolutely wild that is a almost a two three four five almost a six times healing buff for summons on dark blade drain and skeleton hp scaling increased so necros should have way more survivability with their skeleton hp scaling increased and dark blight drain healing summons way more than they used to flame drop proficiency now applies burning to all enemies which is really good because obviously when you drop on someone everyone gets burned so then you just do your burn damage to everyone like because monks get buff damage against burning enemies and also inferno stacks so you do even more damage plus dragon ring plus dragon bone gauntlets and with the last little group of patch notes we have you can now buy and sell lost scrolls of Mudo. And this is such a good change because previously it was just artifacts, but now that you can do lost scrolls, which are also more common than artifacts, you can also trade that in to get artifacts more easier. So I do think this was a very good buff for Mudo. Mudo from the from the Vinium arc. It's when you open up the shop, you trade in artifacts to get artifacts at like a 17 to 1 ratio. So it's kind of a scam on you unless you want a really specific artifact. But the Mudo buy and sell prices also got adjusted. I'm not sure what they currently are, but I'm assuming they got adjusted so it was less of a scam towards the player. But I could be wrong. And finally, a global restore has been added. Now, my thoughts on all these changes. I believe all of these changes were incredibly important for setting a groundwork of patches to pretty much lead us into light and dark because i do believe berserker and Consura were unnecessarily overpowered but now that these things are balanced i don't think and the uh, potion fix i think that was everything that was pretty much allowing us to two minute speed run metrum's vessel so i'm pretty sure we're now in a very safe position for no changes into light and dark now, obviously, with the announcement of bi-weekly updates, we will be seeing a couple probably quality of life features, other patches. But if the game remained unchanged, I am pretty confident, unless the recent patches made somehow Impaler, Dark Wraith, and Impaler, Dark Wraith, Necro, Hexer, and there was another dude was I don't care. If those, if the new things that got buffed somehow become magically busted, which I doubt, unless there was a bug created, then everything should be able to remain unchanged until light and dark, and the game should remain in a healthy state. So, if y'all like the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for listening to my yap session, and if you have any questions, make sure to comment them down below, or you can join my Discord server down below for help. Or more questions. Dark Wraith is also the best class. See y'all later.